because <laughs> we have Kaifer. Kaifer did not join us. Kaifer, you have to join us. And then we have Luz <laughs> who's connecting. Perfect. Kaifer, so you have to show up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Otherwise, into the waiting room. <laughs> ah, okay, I'll go to the waiting room. If your bandwidth will allow. Yes. Show up. As long as you show us, uh, yourself to us, it's we're okay with that. I, I will watch <laughs> on the live. Thank you. If you don't want to participate. Okay, so this is what we're doing. Of course, Marissa is going to tell us about the conference after I talk about the three people who are here. So we're basically talking about use of empowering dispute resolution management processes in community disputes. And of course, you're going to tell us, tell us about MedNet and all that. All that is going to happen. I think I'm going to not talk about the conference. Marissa, is. Marissa what is the conference all about? Anything you want to tell us about the conference? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yes, Vikram. Um, the conference that you have made is actually a way for mediators to share their thoughts on mediation and everything that's needed. Uh, and it's very helpful for us because we're in the path of um, doing advocacy work on how mediation can be strengthened in the Philippines. And uh, this is now our share. This presentation is going to be our share in, um, in, in enriching the mediation experience in globally. Look, the idea behind the conference, of course, we had to celebrate World Mediators Day and what better than Ken Cloak's birthday. So that's why 18th May, I'm celebrating. I've been saying I'm celebrating. People have joined me, so I'm saying we are celebrating. Said that, that day as World Mediators Day because it seems that no one wants to celebrate mediators somewhere. <laughs> and the idea behind the conference was that people choose their topics and talk about it, whatever's close to their heart. So that's what it's all about. And of course, the World Mediation Circle, please read about it. Ideas, it's like a worldwide web of mediation circles. So mediation circles in every school, community, organization. And of course, on the larger whole, everyone's part of the larger whole, but there'll be circles in relation to issues. So there's going to be, there's a global climate change mediation circle. So you have a global level, you have the community level, connect everything together, everyone participates. So that's the kind of thing it is. I won't take more time on this. So basically, it's about you people first telling us about yourself. So Marissa, we'll start with you. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Thank you, Vikram. Um, can I start screen sharing Vikram because uh, there's a Just, short introduction. Yeah, yeah. As long as I mean, everyone else also gets a chance to introduce themselves. So. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Jun Kicho. 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 Kicho is also Hi, here. Hi, Jun. Jun is also with Mednet. Is he going uh, to participate or not? That's the question. Jun, are you going to participate? Well, well, yeah. why, why I have this situation? Because today artificial intelligence has reached that stage. We don't know if it's a bot who's attending the Zoom session. So we have to first <laughs> see you. That's the important part. Next, yeah. then you have to listen to you also. The world is different now. <laughs> hi, 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 Jun. Hi. So, um, so Marissa is going, going to tell us about us. Um, okay. uh, I'll do the screen sharing after everyone has uh, introduced themselves. Um, I'm Marisa Escudero Puche. I'm a Filipino <laughs> uh, with uh, more than 20 years' experience in mediation. And I got to meet uh, Vikram in one of the online sessions of my mentor for online mediation. And since then, he has been, we have been in touch. He is a very um, good resource person and very, a very nice person. Uh, uh, let's see it, Vikram. Hmm. <laughs> well, that was a nice thing. That was the only nice thing I heard out of the whole thing. I didn't hear anything else. What did you say? <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay. So well, yes. So what do you want me to do now? Get everyone else in. What's okay. Uh, maybe we can ask the other. Yeah. Exactly. Brenda has to tell us about herself. Okay. Uh, then Rachel, so and then Gemma. And then my name is Brenda, as shown there. Um, I'm one of the founding members of uh, MedNet, and I've been in in development work since the beginning the beginning of of um my my life after college so that was over 40 years over 40 years ago so i'm actually based in in las vegas nevada so it's early morning here 
So, but because of the new technology, I'm still connected with, with MedNet, even if I'm far away. I'm still a Filipina, a very, very Filipina. I'm a Filipino citizen. Look, you people chose the time. Marisa said 6 o'clock. I was making it even later. She went back to 6 o'clock. No, no other <laughs> session starts late, at 6 o'clock. late for, for, the, for Manila. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's fine with me. Perfect. So Rachel, yes. Hi. You can call me Che. I'm a founding member as well of, Med- of Mediators Network for Sustainable Peace or MedNet. I'm a Filipina. I've been doing mediation work since the 19... Uh, the 20... 20, 20, 20, 20 something. <laughs> and um, I teach environmental negotiation at the Ateneo de Manila University. And I am an accredited mediator of the Office for Alternative Dispute Resolution of the Department of Justice. That's the good work. So, Gemma, please. Uh, I'm Jama Kunanan. I'm their new recruit. So all these three women are really people that I look up to. My focus has really been largely in development work. It's really coastal resilience, disaster, climate change, um, looking at uh, conflicts related to land use and to uh, water. Um, very happy to be part of MedNet. Just listening to all the experiences uh, these ladies and, of course, you have a lot of males also um, have had in the area of mediation. It's something that I'd like to also, you know, I'd like to follow into their footsteps. That's it, Vikram. Perfect. That's nice. But all of you have to be involved in creating these mediation circles in Philippines. That has to happen. You have to be part of the process. Otherwise, yes. Jun, Jun, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Oh yeah, I, I'm also with Mednet. I, I've been with Mednet for since time immemorial. Uh, I am a lawyer. I started out as a lawyer, um, 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 specifically fashioning my my career as a public interest environmental lawyer. And for the most part, we've been doing a lot of mediation and other forms of of uh, dispute resolution without even knowing that we were doing such uh, until, of course, uh, the our project that, that started uh, MedNet uh, came around and uh, suddenly the face had the name. And uh, we're still doing it right now, uh, until, until now. I am an accredited uh, third party neutral by the Office of the uh, uh, Alternative Dispute Resolution of the Department of Justice. And also, uh, I am a, a I am doing um, uh, a lot of a lot of uh, environmental and social safeguards uh, interventions for for renewable energy uh, and bulk water projects in the Philippines. Great, but tell me when you said neutral, when you say neutral, it means do you are neutral in the sense of as a mediator when you say yes. that? Yes, yes. It, yes. So here that, that doesn't how, work. Yes, that's how it uh, our accreditation from the from from government says a certain here, uh, accredited uh, neutral. Yeah, so now here it doesn't work. Here we debate neutrality. We do yeah. not say that mediator is neutral because that's a whole subject. There's a symposium I did on neutrality and mediation. Please watch those sessions because. Oh, it's, thank you very it's, much. It's we'll basically put out as a very casual, okay, mediator neutral. There is lots more that happens. And Bernie Mayer, who's one of the speakers there, has written books on neutrality. So his latest book, mm-hmm. book is Neutrality Trap in relation to social change. So it's an important aspect. We need to debate these words. Yeah, we should also inform our government on that because yeah. that's how the, the accreditation goes. Absolutely. Yeah. Because countries have not used that. A lot of countries use impartiality, independent and impartial. Neutral, neutral, they shouldn't use. But because if the point is the user, how do we explain to the user what is neutrality? That's one full session or 10 sessions only to explain neutrality. That by itself is a issue. So Ray, Rosemary is here with us. Rosemary, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Good evening. Yes, I'm Rosemary Johnson Herrera. I'm a member of MedNet, one of the founding members. So that's, I'm a nurse by profession, but uh, yeah. I'm sure there was definitely there's more to Rosemary than that. I'm sure. Thank you. Isn't there? That's it. Nurse, 
I am a founder okay. member. That's it. Beyond that, here, there, somewhere, is that okay? Is that a what child, grandchild? What is that? Okay. Grandchild. 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 So, so you're a grandmother, Rosemary. What about that qualification? Okay. Yes, oh. yes, that, that was my grandson. Yeah. <laughs> so that is your major yeah. qualification. Everything is else is secondary. You reached all here because you had to be a grandmother. <laughs> Yes. yes, yes, Marisa. I don't know whether we other people who are coming in. Let's go into the session. So, Marisa, please take us forward. Okay, let me do the screen sharing now. Vikram. Yep. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Vikram, I'd like to thank. I'd like to thank you. Uh, and uh, the rest of the World Mediation Circle, including your resolution revolution. Um, but uh, we'd like to proceed with the presentation proper by uh, introducing the proponent of EDRMP, and that is um, Mediation uh, Mediators Network for Sustainable Peace. Okay, let me do screen sharing. You are in screen sharing. I am in screen sharing, okay. Um, Mediators Network has been in the practice of local peace building already over 23 years. We have continued to equip and empower leaders and members of grassroots communities with the skills and tools they need in mediating for peace. Um, we have prepared, uh, we have a short, audiovisual presentation to encapsulate our existence for over the last two decades. After this video, I will turn over the microphone to Brenda Batistiana, who will do the presentation proper. And you want if, me to, if you want if you me to play that? Any... Yeah. You want me to play it? Hmm? Yes, okay. please. Yeah, okay. Um, if, if you have questions, we can please hold it until the, the, the presentation is over. Yeah, so I have to. Um, no, I want to play that. No, are you playing the video? Yeah, yeah, okay. You can play. You can play. Yeah. Just one second. Give me a second. Oh, I have to see whether I have selected the video option or not. I can see, Vikram, that this is more presentation of bed net to you. <laughs> uh, looking at the participants. <laughs> the Mediators Network for Sustainable Peace Incorporated is a network of individuals and professionals that uphold and promote the principle of empowering dispute resolution or dispute management processes and conflicts on land tenure, natural resource, and inter- and intra-organizational disputes involving or affecting marginalized sectors and other key stakeholders. Established 20 years ago as a network of conflict resolution practitioners, MedNet focuses on agrarian, environmental, natural resource, urban housing, ancestral domain, RIDO, and other community disputes offering services such as conflict analysis and conflict mapping, facilitation, negotiation coaching, and mediation. The network's lifetime mission is to promote EDRMP to different sectors with due consideration to the existing dispute resolution practices of indigenous communities. It envisions itself as an institution that contributes to the forging of a successful nation where justice and peace exist and democracy and ecological balance reign in the community where gender-sensitive and competent conflict managers are proactive in the resolution of disputes, and where a stable network of support and EDRMP practitioners collectively work towards sustainable peace. MedNet's goal is directed at mainstreaming EDRMP as a viable approach to resolving community disputes. MedNet conducts training courses that revolve around topics that aim to sharpen the knowledge, skills, and attitude of an individual in facilitating negotiation processes. The organization offers four courses on EDRMP training, namely 
the nature and dynamics of conflict and nonviolent communication, conflict mapping, mediation approaches, and healing and reconciliation. The courses on nature and dynamics of conflict and nonviolent communication, as well as on conflict mapping, aim to familiarize MedNet partners on the nature of conflicts, EDRMP features and approaches, conflict diagnostic tools or CDT, and nonviolent communication. The Mediation Approaches course exposes the participants to the interest based, narrative, harmony based, and transformative mediation approaches. The Healing and Reconciliation course focuses on reflection sessions on the concepts of healing and reconciliation and invites participants to look at international and local practices. By the end of all the four courses, participants are expected to help resolve conflicts in their communities and promote local conflict resolution mechanisms. There are samples of actual cases where MedNet facilitated their mediation practices on. These are First, the Angat Watershed Forest Reservation case, which is about the mistreatment of the natural resources of the said watershed. After a thorough research and data gathering, MedNet recommended a facilitated dialogue between the residents and the National Power Corporation to offer an alternative livelihood for the residents of Barangay San Lorenzo. The second case is MedNet's intervention on the proposed Pulangi 5 hydropower project in Malaybalay, Bukidnon. The conflict map identified the data problems on conflicts on relationship, value conflicts, structural conflicts, and interest conflicts. After information drives, gathering endorsements, recognition of opposing groups, surveys, and communication among stakeholders, concerns were raised and attended to, later cancelling the project. These are just some of MedNet's successful conflict resolution experiences. By continuing the mediation practice, MedNet hopes to contribute to sustainable peace in many more communities. The success of MedNet relies on their partner organizations and participant mediators and how they are going to use the knowledge and skills that they've acquired during their training. By applying all of these to their respective communities and organizations, not only will the principles of EDRMP spread widely, but peace and harmony amongst the citizens of our country will also be sustained. Let us create a better and more peaceful community by working together and provide the following generations a peaceful nation to live on. Yes, yes. But, okay. but is that something about Rido? What was Rido and other, what was that? It's something. a clan conflicts among Moro communities in Southern Philippines. It's uh, usually retaliatory in nature, very violent, involving arms, and uh, um, can go on for decades. Okay. So that's it's worked there. I mean, all this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Great, Marissa. So you want to do? Okay. Take... Uh, do I do screen sharing again? Yes. Um, Okay, I'll do screen sharing. Grandmother Marissa has to get to learn all these things also. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I turn over the uh, the presentation flow to Brenda. Brenda? Okay. Uh, yeah, Marisa, can you move the... That's, uh, that's it, uh, Brenda. Uh, all right, okay. Uh, good evening again uh, to everyone. And I echo uh, Marisa in thanking you, Vikram, for giving us the Mediators Network for Sustainable Peace this opportunity uh, to share in this year's uh, World Mediators Conference the general principles and approaches of empowering dispute resolution or management processes, or EDRMP, as designed and practiced by MedNet. Uh, so, uh, and I, of course, I also thank my colleagues in MedNet who are here for your show of, of support. Uh, it's really very good to see all of you here with us. And together, we'll share to Vikram who we are in MedNet and what we do. Uh, so my presentation is actually uh, a sharing of story of the journey of, of MedNet. And it will follow 
this outlines. So, and, and the overall objective of this presentation is to give an overview of EDRMD. Uh, the first, number one, is on who were the people behind the development of EDRMD and what is MedNet, which has continued to promote the use of EDRMD. I start with the who, because knowing the background of the people who developed EDRMP and the specific context that drove them, that drove us to meet and develop this mediation model will explain its underlying spirit or moving force. So this spirit or moving force continues to be alive in the members, partners, and peace building work of, of MedNet. So uh, because uh, the people here are mostly from MedNet. So if in, you may butt in in the middle of my presentation if you have more additions or you have uh, something to, to uh, clarify further. So, and now with, with the background of who the people involved in, in preparing, in developing this mediation model, we will go to the second, which is what is EDRMP? So in this second part, I will give an overview of EDRMP, particularly its general principles and key features, the general guiding process, and the general mediation approaches. This part will take a big bulk of my, my presentation. And then, uh, of course, the third part. This presentation will not be complete without clarifying for whom and by whom uh, EDRMP has been designed. So essentially, um, its users. And, and the fourth part is on how MedNet has applied EDRMP in specific cases. So Rachel Aquino, uh, the Vice President of MedNet, will present some examples of our mediation experiences. All right. So on the who? So MedNet was formed in 1999 after a series of initiatives that started in 1994. So this slide describes the people involved before and during MedNet's formation and up to the present. So uh, we can say that the pre-MedNet pre formation phase started with successful mediation initiatives and the desire to replicate these experiences for similar in similar types of conflict. One was, let me give some story on how this all started. So uh, one of the successful mediation initiatives was a complex agrarian dispute in 1994 in Calamba, Laguna. And it, 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 you will see here, Vikram, that from the beginning, MedNet has been very clear that we are not neutral. Media. Neutrality was also a question for all of us. So uh, it, uh, it was complex because involved the conflict involved a big tract of land with, which had been approved for land conversion by the government. So And there were multiple parties involved, the landowner, and three farmer groups which, with different political orientations. So they were coming from diff different uh, political formations. And you can imagine the conflict even among the, the farmer groups. And violence had erupted, killing one guard of the landowner. And the Department of Agrarian Reform, or DAR, the government agency assigned to handle agrarian disputes, had given up on the case. And they had forwarded it to the office of the president, president of the Philippines, um, for decision. However, DAR attempt, attempted one more time to address the conflict at the community level by inviting Corazon Juliano Soliman, the then executive director of a non-governmental organization or NGO, now called the Community Organizers Multiversity to mediate. Dinky, and Dinky, unfortunately, and we miss her a lot, uh, passed away in, in 2021. So Dinky uh, was known in the Philippine NGO community as a good facilitator of dialogues and a strong advocate of agrarian reform. She accepted the invitation of the DAR and asked me to be uh, her co-mediator. I was at that time 
uh, the national coordinator of a consortium project of several NGOs in the Philippines. And uh, th that project organized uh, rural community organizers all over the country into the Philippine Community Organizer Society. So to cut the story short, uh, the mediation intervention resulted in an, uh, by us, um, more NGOs, uh, from uh, mediator from NGOs. It resulted in an applicable settlement accepted by all parties as mutually beneficial. And um, I said from the beginning, it was very clear um, the position of MedNet about neutrality because in this conflict, Dinky and myself talked to the landowner and made clear to them that we are not neutral. We were partial to the farmers being advocates of agrarian reform. It was very clear to the owner and still they accepted our, our involvement in the whole process as third party facilitator. Um, so uh, Dinky accepted the, the, the invitation um, to replicate uh, the experience because it was a very successful uh, mediation process. And what we did was to uh, mobilize. So the CO Multiversity mobilized other NGOs involved in rural community organizing to help respond to this request of the AR, the AR DAR, DAR. So there, uh, um, Tutsi came in, Luz came in, and then June, I will explain later. Yeah. Now, so because of that, a collaborative project between DAR and the, the government and the NGOs led by CO Multiversity was designed and implemented. And then a similar experience happened in the environmental sector, which led to a government NGO collaborative project to promote the use of appropriate dispute resolution processes or for community disputes involving the use and management of natural resources. The government was a department of environment and natural resources and the NGO was Tangol Kalikasan or it's a Tagalog term in English, defend the environment or defend the nature. Uh, which was composed mostly of environmental lawyers, including June Kicho. So June had, uh, has been there from, from the beginning. So uh, as I said here, um, the, the desire was to replicate those experiences in, through those projects. Then towards the end of those two projects, the players decided to meet. So. And the, uh, in, in those meetings, we shared our experiences and lessons on the use of uh, mediation or appropriate dispute resolution processes for agrarian and environmental disputes. And the exchanges and consensus building led to the formulation of EDRMP. So in short, the WHO, um, who, who developed EDRMP uh, were from the government and NGOs who were involved in community development work. So in, in 1999, the EDRMP formulators decided to form a structure or organization to promote the use of EDRMP. So MedNet was formed in 1999. The mission of MedNet, as explained in the video, uh, is to promote the use of EDRMP for conflicts related to agrarian disputes, because that's what that's uh, uh, we came from. And of course, access and use and management of natural resources, ancestral domain, urban housing, and other disputes involving and affecting man marginalized groups in Philippine society. So that was very clear to us. Uh, we, we set the parameters of, of the involvement of mediation. So we set it up to contribute to uh, the empowerment of, of, of our marginalized communities in the country. So METED currently operates as a resource center. It's a human resource center. Uh, so we have conflict mappers, ADRMP facilitators, and um, coach 
uh, coach of uh, mediators. Uh, it's a knowledge resource center, so we provide training. We also do research, and we've been invited to do a lot of research. And we also have set up a library. library. It's a small library, so where we try to compile all good materials. So uh, if students and and our office is near to big uh, universities in the country, so if they need to research more on uh, alternative dispute resolution processes or on EDRMP, so we are there, MedNet. And, and MedNet is also a center where mediators meet, so uh, virtually or in person or in written form, we exchange emails to learn from one another by exchanging mediation experiences, successes, challenges encountered, doubts, questions, and lessons. So it, it's a regular forum, forum of mediators. Uh, the Philippines is divided into three uh, main, main parts, the Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. So the forums that we, we conduct regularly uh, are by, by, by island regions. So Luzon forums, Visayas forums, and Mindanao, Mindanao forums. So that's the who. In short, most of us are community development workers. And when we formed MedNet, even the people from government started or continued to be involved in their individual capacity. So what is EDRMP that we that uh, that we have agreed on? So and we and we said uh, first it's key features and principles. So the founding members of MedNet agreed to facilitate an EDRMP that reflects these seven principles or features. And uh, I, I forgot to say that during the conferences where we developed EDRMP um, because the the DNR Tangol Kalikasan project also involved uh, uh, people from, from indigenous communities. So during those all process, we had participants from indigenous uh, people. So uh, these are the seven features and principles. So one is it should be inclusive uh, as EDRMP actively ensures the involvement of all parties, especially women and disadvantaged groups and their representation in, their, in the negotiation or mediation process. So that's the first principle. The second principle, it should be participatory. Uh, as, it, as, EDM, as the EDRMP empowers all people, and let me emphasize again, including women and disadvantaged groups to equally participate in sharing their perspectives on the conflict, their diagnosis in the, on the, of the conflict and participate in searching for mutually acceptable solutions. So the parties are in control of the process and outcome of the conflict on intervention. The process is voluntary as the parties can withdraw if they assess the mediator is biased against them. So we emphasize the voluntary mediation in that uh, example that I gave regarding the agrarian disputes in in 1994. So we told the owner, though we are not neutral because we are ag agrarian reform advocates and are partial to the farmers groups, if there's a point in the mediation process that the landowner felt that uh, you know the, bias, the, the, the process was completely biased for, for the farmers groups uh, and did not consider their needs and concerns too, then the landowner can withdraw. So it's a voluntary process. Yeah. And EDRMP is, a, is an equalizer, especially in the context of, of the Philippines. Yeah. As it is sensitive to the sources and effects of power imbalance among parties and seeks to address this power imbalance. That agrarian dispute in, in 1994 actually involved a big landowner, a very rich landowner and very known politically, especially during the martial law time uh, in the Philippines. Um, so it's, it's equalizer. So you can imagine the, the very big power imbalance in that, in that dispute. So we were there to equalize power uh, and that's EDRMP. And, and fourth, 
uh, EDRMP is also culturally sensitive because it considers the indigenous uh, conflict resolution or management perspectives and practices of the parties and the mediators. An example is, is the criteria for the selection of mediators. For instance, in the Philippine context, in the Philippine culture, a stranger from the city, even if a competent mediator, may not be acceptable as a mediator in some communities in the Philippines. So we are sensitive to that culture of our communities. And fifth, EDRMP is systematic as it follows a general process and approach. So we have a guide for our mediators, including guides for conflict diagnosis. diagnosis. We have tested conflict diagnostic tools and informed, and we do informed conflict resolution or management interventions. Yet, although we have um, uh, developed guiding process, we make sure that the mediators are sensitive to the context, to the situation, and be flexible and creative in that process. And sixth, EDRMP should be educative because uh, we expect the parties to learn methods that they can use for their other conflicts. And, and our, as our uh, name uh, connotes, EDRMP, the seventh, should be sustainable, yeah. Because it may include, if the parties are ready, healing and reconciliation rituals, as I said, based on the party's readiness, yeah. So that's these are the key features and principles of MedNet. And, and these features and principles are uh, results of a consensus building process uh, among the players of the two, two projects. In, in, in 97 to 1998, before the formation of MedNet. And we continue to, to confirm, affirm uh, these features and principles. So we go to the next part of the what. Uh, so, um, so the general process, yeah. So to, get, to guide, yeah, Risa. So to guide our mediators, MedNet has developed a mediators uh, facility, uh, it's a facilitator's roadmap, so which is a general systematic process to follow. So in training mediators on how to use this guide, we emphasize the importance of flexibility and creativity as the situation may call them to follow an iterative rather than a linear media mediation process. Yeah. So the guide includes key action points for each of the four phases of the mediation intervention. So here I will give an overview of the key action points for each phase. So, and we have four phases, the pre-entry of the, of the mediator, the entry, the dispute resolution or management process, which is the actual face-to-face. -face. Now there's a virtual mediation process too. And then the mediators wrap up and next steps. Under the pre-entry pre phase here, the, the mediator, are you still okay? Are you still with me? I am. I am. Okay. Your colleagues See, are there actually, with us. Uh, we, you know, we, we, have, we have new... Uh... Alex, you have yeah, to meet. Alex. Alex, you want to say hi to everyone? Quick hi. Alex is actually in Paris. Hi, everyone. She, but she was the good experience that she's had a life changing experience. She was at the Poland Ukraine border working with the oh. refugees who were coming from Ukraine. So she spent one year there and she's had a very interesting experience, which she's spoken about. In if you search her name, you put Mediator Vikram and search her name, you'll find those things. Oh. And of course, she's in the conference, she's given her session on project management crisis and mediation. Yes, Alex. And um, I just hi everyone, and I'm also fascinating by the, by this topic because, uh, in addition, I'm uh, I'm an engineer specialized in uh, in uh, in district uh, heating and uh, and in water management and this kind of things. And uh, I've always been impressed by this kind of dialogue you have when a project, a big infrastructure project, occurs. And uh, I would love to to take part to such kind of uh, endeavors you're having. So. Very great topic. So I'm happy to hear <laughs> what you say next on this. It's it's really 
great, <laughs> great job you're doing. Thank you for joining us, Alex. Thank you. And thank you very much, Alex, for being here. So I'll continue my uh, presentation of EDRMP as designed and practiced by the Mediators Network for, Sta for Sustainable Peace. We're based in the Philippines, yeah. So during pre-entry, uh, the mediator, of course, does an initial conflict diagnosis, usually by interviewing the one who uh, invited the mediator to intervene into the conflict situation. Or uh, it, it, it can also be an initial interview with, with the parties. And then the mediator identifies the people with, an author with authority or in a better position to mediate. If, if that is not here, uh, clear at the beginning, because in the Philippines, we have mechanisms for mediating different types of conflicts. So for example, if it's a conflict related to agrarian, so we have the barang barangay is a term for village. So we have the Barangay Agrarian Reform Committee, BAR, which is mandated by law to mediate cases at the, at the community le level. So if it's a conflict involving uh, public land, so we have the Department of Environment and Natural Resources and, and other types of conflicts related to, to resources that are not covered by, by agrarian reform. So that's that's DNR. For and there are also conflicts not covered by DNR and DAR in the in the communities. And we have a mechanism for, for mediating those types of conflict too. So uh, it, it, we call it in Tagalog, Lupong Tagapamayapa. In English, it means committee for peace, <laughs> like that. Yeah. So we have different mechanisms and there are people in place in those, in those uh, structures. So we have, when we come in from the outside, if, we, if we're coming from, from the outside, so we have to, to, uh, to identif identif identify who they are and in and if our entry is also acceptable to them so, so and there the, the the mediator clarifies um the role to play whether as lead mediator depending on agreements with those in authority in the community or co-mediator or a co or coach of mediator we also prefer to uh, select resource from the ground so if there are mediators other than those involved in the formal structures who are acceptable to the other par parties and we we help them and we so there we act as coach or co-mediator depending on the situation and then before we formalize or finalize our entry into a community mediation process and the use of EDRMP we ensure the legitimacy and acceptability of the role of MedNet as mediator or, or coach. So that's the pre-entry. Once that has been established, so we go to the entry phase. Yeah. So uh, the mediator does further conflict diagnosis through separate meetings with each party using tested conflict diagnostic tools and prepare uh, an ish initial conflict map and then uh, the mediator assesses with the parties their readiness to meet in person in a negotiation or mediation table. Uh, and then um, with the parties, the mediator decides on the time and place of, of the meeting. So there, when, ev when everyone has agreed on the time and place of the meeting, we move to the, to the actual face-to-face mediation process. So the, the mediator fac facilitates the parties exchanges that usually begins with the setting of ground rules. And then the, the mediator actively listens and para paraphrases the parties utterances during the, the negotiation and mediation process and summarizes the issues of the, of the parties and then uh, facilitates the surfacing of acceptable solutions to resolve each issue identified and then towards them agreeing to the uh, to the solution, and uh, any time in the whole process uh, during the uh, actual face to face uh, mediation, uh, the mediator can ask for caucus uh, with each party, meaning separate meetings with each party if the situation calls for it. For example, if if uh, the the exchanges are becoming very toxic and and very conflictual. 
So when the parties have agreed um, with um, certain sets of solutions, we go to the wrap up, which is the writing and signing of agreement. And then if the parties are ready, um, um, MedNet um, facilitates healing and re reconciliation rituals. And we have also have guides for this. And then, and also um, the parties may be invited to the forum of MedNet to share their lessons. So in that way, they're able to reflect on the whole process and express what they think are the best parts of, and you know, the lessons that uh, they got from from the whole process and how they they think they can apply those lessons in their other conflicts. So this is the whole process in 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 a snapshot uh, on how we we use EDRMP. But as I said, although there's a step by step guide and there's a this whole process, the mediator has to be flexible because there might be a situation when the mediator has to go back go back and forth, go back and forth until a uh, solution is reached by the parties. I, I, I think uh, you are all familiar with this too as, um, as a ex well-experienced mediator. I'm just explaining, uh, presenting what EDRMP is as practiced by MedNet. So the third part of, of the WAP, which was also presented in the video uh, and um, so which may also be familiar to you because these approaches, you can find a lot of materials in the web. So, and, and MedNet's contributions to the literature are on the applications of these frameworks and approaches in, in Philippine community disputes. So we have identified three frameworks and approaches which are distinct from each other, but based on our experience are not mutually exclusive. So the, the mediator can choose their dominant approach and also choose to adopt actions associated with the other approaches, depending on the ass assessed conflict situation and trends. So uh, for an overview of these frameworks and approaches, we will look at each framework's conflict diagnosis lens. Marisa? Yeah, yeah, the focus of conflict diagnosis, the goal of EDRMP or the mediation process and the general approach. Yeah, so first the problem solving approach. So an example of this, oops, not yet. We, we, we go to problem solving approach first. So um, it, 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 under the, the problem solving approach, and this is the, I think the very popular very popular um, approach in mediation. I, I, I actually uh, underwent a training in, in the US on, on interest-based mediation in the early 1990s. So uh, the focus is on unmet needs and interest of the parties, well, actually both compatible and incompatible needs and interests. And there um, the, the mediator, um, facilitates an exchange until the parties are able to, uh, to identify their com compatible needs and interests. And the goal is to uh, find a, be a mutually beneficial solution that satisfies common needs and interests. And the general approach is interest-based mediation, which I think was developed here in, in the US. Uh, Alex, I'm based here in the US. I'm here in Las Vegas. <laughs> so that's why I, I said here. What time does in, your casino open? Hmm? What yeah. the casino open? <laughs> <laughs> the, the place known for the casinos, but I hardly go, go there. Um, okay, on, Vegas, on, yeah, other, on, on YouTube, other, on live more, on YouTube. More interest, yeah, you more interesting that. places to see. Yeah, <laughs> that's more. Uh, it's, it's no, other we understand. Things. On YouTube, you can't accept that. Yes, yes, it's okay. You are not going to the casinos. There, we know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fun sometimes. I, I heard. Uh, you have just to be very, very, uh, you know, have to manage your, your wants. Yep. And so that's the, the one approach that um, MedNet uses when we needed. 
another, uh, well, let me give an example. An example of, of uh, this problem solving approach is in the agrarian dispute that I shared earlier. Um, so after talking with each of the farmers groups and the landowner, landowner's representative, actually, it's, it's not actually the, the landowner who is who was a big landowner, really, and you know, very uh, popular politically in the Philippines. So, um, so after talking to the landowner's representative and the farmers group separately, and during the initial meeting where the two parties were asked to present their perspectives and stories about the conflict, we identified two common needs and interests. So using the problem-solving approach. One was income. The farmers were afraid to lose their, their farmed lands, which they claim to have a right being long-time farmers in the area. And the landowner could not proceed with their planned business project in the area, which was, they explained, a sort of a tourist spot. Uh, and, and they couldn't proceed because of the farmers' organized protest in the area until one of the guards of the landowner was killed. And so that's one uh, common interest of all. And, and the second interest was peace and security. The, far, the farmers would like to continue living in the area without fear of eviction. And the landowner wanted to set up and operate their business with community support. So after a series of meetings and caucuses to understand the party's needs and interests, so coming from the problem-solving approach, an amicable settlement was reached. Because the, the, the landowner was very rich, as I said. So he, he, uh, they uh, provided uh, the, each household living in the area with free home lot with, own, with ownership title. Um, so the mediator, we conducted a survey to identify the people living in the whole area. It's a big area. It's a 144 hectare land. And then second, um, the, the farmers, a, a group of farmers, uh, uh, was given free 15 hectares of farmlands. Uh, these were the farmers who preferred to continue tilling their land. And third was the landowner also gave uh, one or the other farmer groups who preferred to, to uh, buy other farmlands outside of the community or uh, uh, start doing other livelihood. The landowner gave them 7 million uh, pesos. On the part of the farmers, they expressed their agreement to support the landowner's business in the, in the it's, it's actually a mountain, which the landowner guaranteed to be environment friendly. So it was an amicable settlement uh, accepted, accepted by all. So in, in that dispute was resolved using the problem solving approach. So the second is the, the, the social harmony approach. So, so here, uh, the focus of the analysis on social values that have been disrupted by, by the conflict. So, and, and um, the goal of the EDRMP is to search for mutually acceptable solution that promotes the party's common social values. And the, jo the general approach is to uh, facilitate the definition or revisiting of the party's social values and vision and facilitating agreement among the parties on ways to uphold these social values. So uh, to explain that further, let me give an example also done by, by a member of MedMed. It, it, it was a territorial and environmental dispute of groups located in, in, in Mount Banahaw. Mount Banahaw is a mountain, is a mountain considered by many Filipinos as sacred, a sacred mountain. The conflict happened on the east side of the mountain covered by the province of Quezon. So that's in southern part of, of Luzon. One party was a religious group with strong influence and hold on the mountain. This is a religious, religious group. group. Uh, uh, it's, it's sort of a cult, cult located in, 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 the, in the mountain. But but they have members, uh, not many, many members coming, not only, not mostly from, from outside of, of the province. So they stay there. So, and one party was uh, 
group of farmers, longtime occupants in the area. So the farmers protested the religious group's construction of a structure in the mountain, which they claimed to be a violation of the law because the mountain is a public land. There should be no structure there. And it was not environmentally sound. But the religious cl group claimed that the structure was their place of worship and that dismantling it would be more destructive to the mountain. So at that time, the conflict between these groups was getting violent and needed an intervention of a mediator. So uh, a member of MedNet uh, was invited to, and, uh, to intervene. So he started by asking the parties individually and later together about their vision and their desired state of the mountain. So he was able to help the parties develop a common vision of Mount Danahao, and they were able to share each other's appreciation uh, for each other's good practices. So it's an appreciative, appreciative method uh, for each other's good practices in relation to this vision. So in light of, the, of their agreed common vision for the mountain, the parties agreed on measures to protect to, to protect Mount Panahao. So, so the, they agreed not to, to, to dismantle the structure, but the other, the religious group uh, agreed to make it open for use, not only of their group, but for all those who are, who go to the, the mountain and, and for the farmers to also monitor its use because they were concerned about the waste management, waste disposal and management in that area of the mountain. Yeah, and, and of course, people's access to, to uh, the area of the mountain because, because it's, a, it's a public land. So that's the social harmony approach. And the last one is the transformative approach. So this approach refers to the transformation of unhelpful interactions and relationships that bar individuals or groups of people from living together in harmony or working jointly toward the common goal. There. So that's the focus of the conflict, the destructive interactions. The focus, uh, the focus is specifically on the cause and effects of, of their interactions. Why is it very destructive and they are not talking to each other in a, in a very constructive manner? And the goal is to help the parties transform their interactions through empowerment, which means helping each party understand where their, their negative emotions and reactions to the other party are coming from and clarify their needs and interests being affected by their destructive interactions. And also to calm down and focus on needs and interests when conversing on in interacting with the other party to achieve their common goals. So that's empowerment. And the other is through recognition, which refers to the ability of one party to understand, but not necessarily to agree with the needs and interests of the other party. Yeah. So, and you, you can see here, so that's the general uh, goal of EDRMPs, the transformation of their interactions. Uh, we have two general approach, approaches for this framework. One is that we call it transformative or non-violent communication. So here in this approach, the mediator does not use any mediation structure. It's, a, it's an unstructured process. The parties meet upon their request and the mediator convince them and let them speak in the way that they want. No ground rules, no process. The only ground rule of course, is for them not to use any physical physical violence, any, any form of physical violence. So the, the, in the transformative uh, or nonviolent communication approach that the mediator uses, uh, the mediator just listen, paraphrases the party's utterances, especially the toxic ones. And then, um, and, and the purpose is to highlight the needs and interests of the parties. So the mediator asks probing questions in a non-intrusive manner reflects the party's expressed feelings, and summarizes the party's overall messages to each other. The purpose to, is to help the parties clarify their own needs and interests and understand the other party's needs and interests, which were said in a very toxic, toxic manner. So after each meeting, the mediator may talk to each party separately to help them reflect 
on the status and progress of their exchanges. What needs and interests were they able to express? And what needs and interests of the other party they heard? And discuss if they want to move the process forward. So it's totally on the hands of, 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 the, of the parties. And the role of the mediator is to facilitate and use nonviolent communication until each all the parties listen to each other. So uh, there, that, that's the nonviolent, transformative or nonviolent communication. Of course, the nonviolent communication is also used in all other approaches. And the second general approach we call, well, we learned also from the literature and we, we apply in our own mediation experiences, cases, is the narrative mediation approach. Actually, in the Philippine context, it's more of a narrative mediation approach. Uh, here, the mediator seeks to surface the conflict narratives, is the stories of the parties, uh, first separately and later face to face. Um, and so, in, in 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 this approach, the mediator helps the parties analyze each other's stories. Do they have conflicting or converging storylines? Do they accept or reject how they are positioned? in the other party's story? What is their interpretation of the outcome of, of these stories? And, to, and then after understanding all of those stories, and if they are ready um, through the help of the EDRAP facilitator, they together construct an alternative narrative on their situation, on the conflict, where both parties are positioned as equal victims and survivors because they're both affected by the conflict and they, and they accept that. And equal conflict solvers who will mutually gain from transforming their relationship. I know that this is easier said than done and, and also based on our experience. And, but that's how it goes in general. But this, this also works. And let me give an example of how uh, the narrative mediation works as far as Med madness experience is concerned. So uh, uh, one example is um, the conflict between two fishers group in the Philippines. Uh, before the mediation process, these two groups fought verbally during meetings and conferences. Any utterance of one party would be rejected by the other party, even if the the message of the party is very constructive. It will be rejected by the, by the mere fact that, that such constructive message came from, from that the other from the other group. So it's it's a, a it's a clear manifestation of lack of trust in each other. However, they need to at that time, they needed to agree on a common fisher's development agenda because the government did not want to talk to multiple groups with diverging agenda or are very conflicting, you know? So uh, the, the government wanted to meet with one group, meaning um, consortium of different fishers, fishers group, yeah. Um, so they had to meet. And so they requested us to, to help out. I think it was I and Che, were you there? Were you with me? Yeah. So. So they invited MedNet. So I and Che uh, accepted the invitation. And um, so to cut the story, we, we use the transformative, it's mostly the, the narrative mediation process, as, as I explained. So we use that just to cut the story short. It was successful. So the mediation process ended with the, uh, with the parties agreeing to forgive each other and move forward together. So it was a treat. How many days was it, Che? We, we were in one, in one place, in one place, sharing stories about what happened long time ago. And how did this kind of interaction uh, start, you know, going through the stories, stories and, 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 uh, and analyzing those stories until they recognized that they were both affected by the conflict. And not only them, the two parties, but that the whole fisher sector of the country uh, was affected 
because of their destructive interactions. Yeah. So that's that's the mediation approach. So uh, any Che was, was going to tell us. Yeah. Che, che was going yeah. to tell us how long it took. Che, were you going to say something there? She yeah, it was a series. It was a series of uh, meetings, Brenda. I recall. Um, mm -hmm. Probably the one sitting that we went through occurred over three days uh, mm -hmm. of continuous uh, dialogue and uh, facilitation. Yeah, mm -hmm. three, three days and, not bad. Uh, yeah, but there was one ground rule there, Vikram. No one would walk out. No walking out. If you have stories to tell, say it. If you have, re you know, you reject something that the other party said, say it. So uh, then we will resolve uh, those, uh, you know, negative emotions together. So nobody walked out. And it was very clear from the beginning that they, um, they it, it was not only for them, that it will be for the whole fisher sector of the country. Because these are leaders, national leaders of the fisher sector in the, in the country. Yeah. So those are the three general approaches that uh, MidNet use. We, well, depending on the conflict map, we can choose one approach as the dominant approach. Then we can just uh, adopt some of the good elements of the other approaches, uh, depending on the situation. But of course, uh, it, it has to be systematic, flexible. Yeah, and creative, and it should follow should follow the other features and principles that we have agreed on EDR MP principles and and um, and features. Are you still fine there? We are all there. Okay, so we move to the third part of my presentation. So, for whom and by whom is EDR MP, and the answer of. MedNet founding members and even the current members to this question is community mediation as we define it. Yeah. Uh, MedNet's definition of community me mediation is fourfold. And let me present these four folds. Yeah. So in the first fold, we, we define community mediation from the where perspective which means EDRMP is employed in the communities of marginalized sectors. So our, our service as mediators is focused on the disadvantaged groups in the country. So we, as I said, we came from, you know, our background, we, we, we were and we continue to be community development. I was a, I was a community organizer for a very long time. Rural community, well, also involved in urban, urban and rural community organizer. So it is employed in the communities of marginalized sectors or village community or vi villages, or in a place agreed on by the marginalized groups. So we're not neutral. We're we're partial to the marginalized groups, but we make sure that the that the other party knows that the whole process is voluntary that they can withdraw if they think that the process is not beneficial to them. And we, we also use, but we, uh, although from this perspective, we, 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 we use EDRMP in other contexts too, such as the court annex mediation. And Marisa is a court annex mediator and he's, um, she's, uh, she's a well-awarded <laughs> court annex mediator of the country. Yeah, um, we can we we uh, EDRMP can also be used in the work workplace. Still, from from the where perspective, it is very clear in to Mednet that EDRMP it is is designed primarily to be to be done in for in marginalized communities. So that's the first fold. So that we go to the second fold. The sec to further emphasize that point, um, the second fold, in the second fold, we define community mediation from the for whom perspective, which means EDRMP is employed to assist marginalized groups, including farmers, 
fishers, indigenous people, urban poor, women, persons with disabilities, and others, and other marginalized groups affected by the conflict or are involved in the conflict. Then we go to the third fold. So in the third fold, we define community mediation from the by home perspective, which means that as feasible, the EDRMP facilitators are from the communities. Hence, we identify mediators. The community, I don't just refer to the village. It can be in the whole municipality. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, so we identify mediators in the communities, in the area of, of, of the people involved, especially the marginalized groups, and train them through mentoring or coaching. So we conduct training, we invite them to our training, and then if they still need us, so uh, we mentor in the actual mediation process and coach. So in, in complex cases, uh, MedNet mediators can also be co-mediators if acceptable to the conflicting parties because we have to be very uh, sensitive to the culture of the people involved. Yeah, so we have to be very so, so that's why we don't we don't call MedNet a firm of mediators, but facilitators of EDRMP. Yeah. So that's the third fold. In the fourth fold. And this is a very special one because most of us were community development workers. We define community mediation from the com community-driven perspective. In this fourth definition, we define the role of the community in the peace building process and see EDRMP not as individuals, but as an organized community acting as champions of peace pushing for a peaceful resolution and management of disputes that affect them. And, and we, we push for this kind of perspective, especially in the situation of, of communities in conflict, like the one that we explained earlier and that, and that Che explained earlier, the RIDO. The whole community is affected by the RIDO and the whole community can act as, uh, as, as champions of peace. So there, uh, uh, our, our uh, aspiration is also to, to train the community on how to become peace champions, or, organize them to become champions of peace, pushing for peaceful resolution and management of disputes that affect them. Yeah. All these four folds do not have to be present, you know, the, for EDRMP to be called community mediation. For instance, as I shared earlier, MedNet members or other mediators who do not belong to a marginalized community can use EDRMP for community mediation if they go to the area of the marginalized groups and use EDRMP to facilitate the resolution or management of disputes affecting and involving disadvantaged groups. So. It doesn't have to be, the mediator doesn't have to be always, uh, they, they don't always have to be from the community. So, uh, so that's actually uh, the EDRMP, a general overview of EDRMP. Yeah, a short presentation, so, but that's quite long for me. Um, so that ends my, my presentation. The next part is on the how the fourth part of the present, the how. And in this part, che, uh, Rachel Aquino will share examples of med MedNet's mediation experiences. But before we go to that, to that che, um, there might be some questions from... What, from what we'll do, is, um, what we'll, do yeah. is we'll take it up at the end because obviously we have to... The next session is in 15 minutes. Ah, so oh, okay, okay. so we'll, right. we'll take it up before that. Whatever time we have. But obviously, there are lots of things to discuss. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, yeah. but anyway, this is not the, the, the last time that we'll meet. Exactly. We meet again exactly. with Alex. We can continue exchanging our thoughts and experiences in mediation. Thank you. Okay, Marisa, please go. Uh, for the first case, we have the Angat hydropower plant case that was presented in the video that was shown earlier. This is a case involving the potential displacement of a community within 
a protected area where a hydropower plant is located, where residents are being accused of being environmental law violators, where they employ slash and burn practices and cutting of logs of trees. Um, they are in conflict with the National Power Corporation, who is the manager of the hydropower plant. Mednet then was in search desperate need of cases to resolve. So we volunteered to facilitate a negotiation process. And this negotiation process, to cut the story short, led to the creation of a joint fact-finding committee that generated data on residents' economic activities. Um, the outcome of the mediation was that the, media, the community was not displaced, but they underwent joint um, forest protection uh, strategies along with the National Power Corporation. So how was EDRMP applied? First, uh, the, the principle of equality and inclusivity where the poor residents of the village were treated equally as that of the powerful National Power Corporation officials. Uh, they were putting in um, equity and counterparting arrangements in terms of transportation, food, etc., for the mediators to come, which is uh, a long drive away from uh, where Mednet is located. Second, um, we are the information and analysis oriented principle was displayed through a con thorough conflict mapping, which was conducted prior to the mediation processes where the six conflict diagnostic tools were applied and a confidential conflict map report was produced. This conflict map report was used for the um, purposes of mediation, planning a mediation roadmap ahead. Next, uh, the principle of uh, being systematic and yet flexible and creative. The conflict map identified poor knowledge on the concept of protected areas. Mednet conducted a learning session on what uh, protected areas mean. Uh, this is uh, for primarily for the village residents because they understood protected area to mean an office where they are in conflict with. That's their concept of a protected area. It's an office. Whereas we explained that a protected area is something that you uh, protect for the uh, purpose of the present and future generations. And uh, the principle of being EDRMP as educative on negotiation skills among both parties, a training session on effective communication and negotiation was conducted to empower participants on the negotiation processes equally. Separately, they were trained on how to negotiate and they used the actual case where they were um, facing to simulate negotiation processes uh, separately. Next, and the, so that's the first case, no? It was a successful case where relationships were restored and uh, continuous a mechanism was established for continuous dialogue between the residents and the National Power Corporation. The second case is one I have been personally involved in. This is mediating political differences where an organization experienced a crisis in a relationship when pro-ex-president Duterte faction and an anti-Duterte faction emerged. They battled it out on social media, which resulted in name-calling, threats of harm, misinformation, and misunderstanding. It got so bad that people were no longer uh, coming to specific events. Even if members died, they were not present because they were uh, afraid or uh, um, they were avoiding confrontation with other members of the different factions. 
uh, how did we approach this conflict? A council of elders was established which guided the mediation process. And the outcome was that the mediation resulted in a code of ethics in social media and social interactions. Next, uh, the first, how EDRMP was applied. The principle of equality were apply, was applied by having both camps equally represented in the Council of Elders. I call it a Council of all Elders, but we didn't call it as such at that time. It's just uh, a group of uh, advisors. No? But it, it to me, it is a Council of Elders. Uh, and the voluntary nature was emphasized when a prominent member of one camp refused to participate in the process. And we had to respect that uh, uh, position on the conflict. Next. Uh, systematic yet flexible and creative, we devised a creative way of framing the problem which helped members of the mediation team as well as the disputants to proceed and craft a creative solution to the issue. The framing was that uh, how to uphold the primacy of brotherhood and sisterhood despite political differences. That was how we framed the problem. And it was information in and analysis oriented because as we do in all of our uh, complex disputes, a conflict map was produced from a series of interviews and focus group discussions. And this aided the Council of Elders into making decisions on how to proceed. The third case is, uh, it's not a case really, but it's an application of EDRMP in public lands disputes and in training of uh, alternative dispute resolution officers who are handling public lands disputes. There are generally four kinds of conflicts involving public lands. One is land succession, second is boundary disputes, third is encroachment, and fourth is disputes on ownership. And when we trained the alternative dispute resolution officers or ADROS of the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, MedNet applied EDRMP in caselets and critiquing simulation exercises. So EDRMT was the spirit that moved us by, uh, behind the training framework and the cases that we produced. So the principle of equality and inclusivity was were emphasized uh, uh, in caseless that were produced where equal representation of marginalized groups such as indigenous peoples, poor farmers, and informal settlers were um, equally represented in the caselets. And the participatory and voluntary nature of the processes were emphasized in simulations uh, and in the processes themselves in the uh, department's uh, conciliation and mediation processes. So cases go through conciliation initially, and when unresolved, go through mediation by address still on a voluntary basis. When that fails, then the cases go through arbitration processes. Information and analysis oriented uh, were shown where participants were taught conflict mapping, something that they were not used to doing in a systematic manner. In fact, they were taught they were taught before to approach conflict using an empty mind without any um, knowledge prior to the um, uh, mediation process. But MedNet uh, uh, shared with them the conflict diagnostic tools and the conflict mapping processes that aided them in analyzing thoroughly the conflict, in diagnosing the conflict. Uh, 
uh, culturally sensitive, men had exposed the participants to indigenous modes of dispute resolution and oriented them on the harmony approach to mediation, which is an approach widely used by indigenous people and by Moro communities in the Philippines. Lastly, um, the uh, principle of sustainability, MedNet introduced the concepts related to healing and reconciliation, which inculcated to the participants the value of sustainable outcomes to conflict resolution processes. So concepts such as forgiveness, justice, and truth were discussed and reflected on. So that's basically how we apply EDRMP processes both in cases and in training processes. That concludes my presentation. On Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, then. Thank you, Chair and Brenda, for your sharing. Uh, Vikram, I'd like to just, because of the limited time, I'd just like uh, to invite your community to follow us on social media. And if there are those who are interested to know more, please visit our website. And uh, email us if you would like to have a copy of the presentation slides. We are also on Facebook and YouTube. We have fora that is ongoing. We have the one for tomorrow, which is on water and mediation conflicts. In August, we have Reflection in Peace, part three, September mediation in ancestral domains and November mediation in urban housing. So we also have uh, our own magazine, which is called The Mediator, which you can also uh, subscribe to online in our in our website. These are our references and recommended readings that we'd like your community uh, to to look into. And so, thank you. And I turn over the floor now to Vikram. The only thank thing you, is, there's Vikram. so much to talk about, but very limited limited time. So, what we'll do is we quickly say hi to Mikel. We don't get him in. We'll just say hi to him. Hi, Mikel. So, but I think the questions that are coming up from when, when you started off any interesting thing, you said identifying the mediators in the community. That is, that is exactly what the approach that I'm saying is that they're all out there. Let's identify them. The only thing is the next step is the one that I keep having crit criticized, which is the training. I'm saying that they, how do you train someone who's already got everything in them? So mm -hmm. I just don't like that terminology. It just shows that maybe we can put some something in you. I say skill development. I call it skill development because I, I think the training is a little, I don't know, is it demeaning to them? I, so mm -hmm. that's one part. The other part is you, you spoke about the council of elders and also identifying those with authority. Mm -hmm. Does it really stay as mediation or do these people actually impose their whatever solution on them? How, is, how does that yeah. work? Uh, the Council of Elders are the advisors and the mediators assist them. So it's the mediators that are coaching the Council of Elders in terms of uh, uh, the, the, the outcomes of the conflict map and the how to proceed. I'm just saying that the presence of the Council of Elders, does it affect the mediation process? It doesn't because the Council of Elders are, uh, uh, at least in the case that I got involved in, are uh, uh, persons of stature who are representing both camps. And these persons of stature are... are convince the disputants to participate and are, have the authority to say that this um, is the next step for going forward. Well, I'm saying well, a lot of countries, this issue of the elders wanting to, in some way, impose things on people and rather than a conversation happening. So as long as that doesn't happen, it's okay. I mean, I'm perfectly yeah. all right. But then you also spoke about conciliation, mediation. So what is that conciliation process? What all do you do, do that, there? No, the Department of Environment and Natural Resources does a, a, what they call conciliation process. But it's also mediation. It's only the difference only is that uh, who conducts it. Conciliation is conducted by uh, appraisers or not uh, alternative dispute resolution 
officers. They're not yet ADROS. When it's ADROS handling them, then they're called mediation. But they're both mediation. Oh, okay. The other aspect, of course, was the point of, I mean, they wanted to check, do women come out as better mediators? In the case of the Land Management Bureau, yes. The answer is yes. Uh, and they are not lawyers. So they are the most awarded mediators were mostly women, not lawyers. That's important. Both the things are important. That lawyers, it doesn't, lawyers are the ones that sometimes feel there should be the mediator is not required. If people no. understand the process, that it's the lawyer is not required there. And the other aspect is I feel that women would come in as a, would play an important role as mediators. We had one discussion on women and mediation in the conference. So maybe you can have a look at that. But Jordani is here. So we have to start her session as soon as she connects. So of course, thank you very much for the presentation and obviously for the wonderful work that you're doing. I wanted to, hi Jordani. I would, I would, was there someone called Beverly who was there, my, one of my symposia, which was on colonization, decolonization, and mediation. She's from Cordillera. What? Cordillera? Cordillera? Mm. Cordillera. So she was Cordillera. interesting. I'll have a look at that session if you can find it. This was Beverly. She's doing good work there. So we discussed the aspect of mediation and everything. So that session is there. You can search that online. So thank you very much. We'll have to start Jordani's session now. June, June did not get to say anything, but he'll unfortunately, get him. Unfortunately, but I, I, I've heard everything that I, I think should be said in this in this forum from our city speakers. Perfect. So everything. Great. So lots, of course, lots needs to be said. I mean, in terms of the process and everything. We'll have our we'll have some workshop. We'll do some workshop. This is part of the skill development project that I'm putting up. We'll do some workshops and all of that. So yeah. thank you very much. And yeah, we, I hope this is not the last time we're seeing each other. Absolutely, absolutely. Baby, keeps... um, Vikram, can we have a video, uh, photo op? Photo but op, don't yes. See myself. Yeah. Okay. Is everyone <laughs> here? For... Everyone is here. <laughs> I'm not there. <laughs> Am I there? You are there. You are there. Gemma has okay. just come in. And of course, okay. those are also here. Photo op, everyone comes for. I should. We should have said. This entire thing is one photo op. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Vikram. Thank you, you very much. You, very you people much. can stay. If you, I mean, yeah, everyone can stay. There's no issue about you can stay here. We all wish. Jordan is uh, unfor uh, Unfortunately, Vikram, I have work. No uh, as I said, uh, yeah. <laughs> so okay. I will need to uh, okay. leave. Yes, yes. And Perfect. it's also getting late here. Yeah. Perfect. So I'll be. We'll, 